Good afternoon, Bridgeway family. It's so good to be with you. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Will Eastham, and I'm a, I'm a pastoral resident here at Bridgeway. And on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. David Anderson, I want to welcome you to 30-Minute Thursdays in God's Word, which is one of our mature and mighty challenges for this ministry year. Well, we're going to try something a little bit different uh, today. But you know, the Word of God, the message of God, the truth of God, it's not just for sermons or for study, but it's also for singing. It's for savoring. It's for those in-between moments of meditation and contemplation and personal worship before the Lord on the altar of our hearts. One verse that's going to frame our engagement with God's word this afternoon is uh, written by the Apostle Paul in Colossians 3, verse 16. We're writing to a congregation of Christians. He writes this, Let the message or the word of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And so that's, that's going to be how we engage with God's Word this afternoon. Rather than a, a sermon, we're actually going to have a time of singing, a time of savoring God's Word, savoring God's presence together and allowing his word, his message to dwell richly in our hearts, to fill our hearts as some translations say. And we're blessed to have Minister Ronald Green with us uh, this afternoon who's going to lead us in a time of worship, of singing songs from the spirit to your heart. But as we begin, I, I want to pray a, a psalm as Paul mentions psalms here. And I also just want to pray that even now, Lord, your word wouldn't just fill our hearts, but that it would fill our living rooms, that it would fill our cubicles, that it would fill our cars, wherever it is, Lord, that we are engaging and encountering your word. I pray that you would turn it into a, an altar, into a site of encounter, God, where your word wouldn't just stay in our minds, but it would flow and fill our whole hearts and our whole lives, our whole atmosphere and environments, God. We offer this time up to you in Jesus' name. And before we enter into a time of singing, let's together savor this spiritual song, this psalm that one of God's artists, actually King David, wrote in Psalm 147, or excuse me, Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and they speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. 
The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and you satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Let's praise his holy name together, Bridgeway. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to invite you all to worship with us as we worship. I don't know who's out there and watching, listening. And I don't know where you are in life, where you are in your head or in your heart. But what I do know is all of us uh, stand in need of the presence of God. And there is nothing like the presence of God. If you believe that, you can type amen in the comment section. But there's nothing like the presence of God. Anybody need to tap into the presence of the Lord today? I know I do. So why don't we do that today? I love what the scripture said. He he hears the cries of his people and he answers them. That's why we praise you, God, from the, out of the depths of our souls, the depths of our heart, God. Whenever we find lack within us, we know you are the only one that can satisfy. You are the only one who can satisfy, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Before we go into a song, why don't you give him your song? Only you can satisfy, Jesus. Only you can satisfy. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Said I've tasted. And seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Come on, let's sing together. And Holy Spirit, you. You are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. Nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. And 
I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Yes, Lord, it's your presence glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your good. Come on, sing it. Let us become. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your What our hearts long for To be overcome By your presence, Lord Your presence, Lord Your presence
It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our Come on, all the earth, say, all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Sing, it's your breath, it's your breath in our lives. like you, Jesus. Oh, we say, great are you, Lord. As we were singing, now let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. And as we meditate on Paul's exhortation to let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. I, I thought again of Psalm 1, that blessed person who meditates on the law and the word of God, who finds their delight in God's word and God's law. And I want to take some time and pray into what we've been worshiping, the word we've been meditating on together. And I sense in my spirit that there are people who are watching this who Maybe you're still studying God's word. Maybe you're still, you know, trying to hear God's word. You're memorizing God's word, and yet there's not that sense of overflow of delight. There's not that overflow in spiritual songs and psalms from the heart. God's word has sort of become dry and stale for you. So Minister Ronald and I, we're going to pray into just a little bit um, these words of Paul and ask that God would just make his word come alive for you again, that God would fill you with delight as you meditate on his word and let it dwell among you richly. So we pray even now, Lord, that you would come and be present with us. Yes, yes, Jesus. We pray, Holy Spirit, yes, God, that you would come alongside every single person under the sound of my voice. We know, Lord, that you, you are the same God, the same spirit which raised Christ from the dead. You also, Lord, you can raise dead people spiritually too, people who, who maybe just have a deadened sense of your awareness, Lord, who have a hard time connecting with the truth that they read in your word, who feel disconnected from you, who feel a deadened sense of delight in you, God. And so we pray that you would 
let us become more aware of your presence. Yes, God. Let us experience the glory of your goodness in the same way that David experienced it, in the same way that Paul experienced it, in the same way that so many of our brothers and sisters throughout church history and around the globe have experienced it. We ask that you would just fan the flame of our hearts, Lord. Let your word dwell in us richly. God is still moving, I hear the Lord speaking and he, I hear the Lord saying, today, it's time for you to empty out. A lot of times God is trying to fill what is already filled with some other stuff. There's a scripture in the Bible and I can't remember. Um, we have over here Will, who's, who's a theologian, but um, I, I have a scripture in my head and uh, Will, you probably know where it is, but it is talking about Elijah and the woman who had, uh, who had to go around her, her area and get empty jars to fill so she can feed her family. And I remember Elijah said to the woman, because she was about to die, like she's, she's a widow, and she says, we need money for our family. We have collectors trying to collect funds and things like that, and we need money for our family. And he said, what do you have in your house? I have a question for you. What do you have in your house? In addition, he said, go around and get empty jars from the people around you and start filling them with oil. And you know what happened? They started filling them until they couldn't fill them anymore. Why? Because the jars ran out. The oil ran out when the jars ran out. So our prayer today, God, is that we would empty ourselves so that you can come in and fill us. God, our prayer is that we empty ourselves, God, shame, guilt, pride, so that you can fill us with the oil, with the anointing, God. And Lord, only then can we see true victory. So God, we thank you that you are the one who can fill every one of our needs, even our desires. So Lord, we claim victory right now in being full, not with things, but full with the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel you filling people even now as they're on this feed, God. You're filling now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's a song we sang Sunday. It goes, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You try that. Come on, say. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Sing it out. Say, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Because you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good, you turn it for good. Yeah, come on, declare that right now. Say, you take what the enemy meant for evil, 
And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Come on, I feel faith rising in this place. Come on, you take, you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Yes, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. You turn it for good. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. Yes, God. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. Yes, Jesus. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to sing that again. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. One more time to say, because you take what the enemy meant for me. And you turn it for good, yes, you turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. I believe you turn it for good. Oh. We prepare to end this time of, of worship and word together and take it with us into the rest of, of our day. I feel very aware that every time God wants to plant the seed of his word in our life, the evil one we know always comes right behind him and wants, wants to tear it out, wants to pluck it up from the soil of our hearts. And so I just wanna pray a prayer sealing and protecting whatever it is that God might have given you during this time of word and worship today. And I invite you, even sort of as a symbolic action, sort of like the widow that Minister Ronald mentioned, taking those jars and laying them out, being ready to receive what, what it was that the Lord wanted to give her. I, I just invite you even now to just put out your hands, palms up, yes. as we, we end this time with a time of prayer expectant and ready to receive from the Lord everything that it is he wants to impart to you. The Lord, with our souls emptied and ready to be filled by you, I ask even now, Holy Spirit, that you would protect what it is that you've given to us during this time of worship. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you do seal, you do protect what it is that you've deposited to us as we await to see it fully and finally given and revealed to us when your son Jesus comes back. And I pray even now that you would just protect the seed of your word that you've planted in our souls, that Lord, it would not only find good soil, but that you would continue to send the rain and the sunshine, all of the different elements that it needs, Lord, the spiritual conversations from someone, that text of encouragement, that moment of silence and stillness where we hear and experience your presence with us and your voice speaking to us, nurturing and watering whatever word it is that you've given to us during this time. I pray, Lord, that it would find not only good soil, but that it would be able to stretch out its roots, that it would grow and dwell in us richly, ultimately spreading out fully blossomed, fully bloomed, fully mature and mighty, reaching and extending out to bless our community, our culture, and our world for Jesus. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this family and for this house. We pray that you would bless us as we go with you 
into the rest of this day. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for joining us for this time of word and worship. Thank you so much, Minister Ronald, yes, sir. for ministering with all of us to the of our Father. It was so good to be with you. We look forward to seeing you next week. Go in peace, Bridgeway.